Have you heard that? So what happened? Oh, oh my God. Where did that come from? Oh, there's a Coates' logo on there. Coates' logo and an MRM squared. Oh, I think the guys from our system partner. Oh, this thing is hot. Hot surface. Let me, let me just call them. Just give me one second. Roland. Mark, Mark, are you there? Yes. Hi, Roland. How can I help you? Oh, are you free? Is it okay? No, no, I'm with Johannes. Well, you can't believe it. Here we have something just fallen from the sky. There's a Coates logo and an MRM square logo. And I think you've something to do with it. She, she metal. What happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we actually made the payload, the payload shell. Well, what a payload cladding. What on earth is that? For the Ariane, ah, for the rocket, for the Ariane rocket. Um, yes, somehow, yes, yes, somehow. Okay, then I know what's going on. Okay, let's, okay, yeah. Mark, thank you very much. See you in a bit. Bye-bye, see ya. Thanks, Roland, bye. Well, that was Roland, he just called. Well, they have a payload cladding, basically, that just fell in Kempton. Just, just in front of his feet. Yeah, camped in the center of Europe, I see, I see. Yeah, um, yes. Um, well, it's quite an interesting thing with the payload claddings. Let's have a look at it, I think. Let's have a closer look at it. Yeah, I prepared something for us. Yeah, so here we see a payload cladding of an Ariane rocket. Just as it w is integrated in the RAMs, or then finalized. It's quite an interesting process on how such a payload fairing or cladding is produced. So in the first step, we have the um, payload fairing. So it's, it's a carbon fiber is just laid out in different lines. And then through a traverse, everything is put into the negative and in an additional process, it's baked. <laughs> so if the cover is readily baked, it needs to be checked whether there are any defaults. This is done in the NDI. So we have an air ultrasound with which it is used just to find inclusions, etc. After the payload fairing is checked, in the next system, the next plant, the HIS, so everything that is important later, so drillings, etc., that are needed for profiles later on, is checked for those. And in the last step, the pre processed payload fairing is put into the MSDA, where this half shell is integrated and remaining works are finalized, as we could see before. Well, I have to totally agree. It's an absolutely interesting process, an exciting process. I'd say we have a closer look at it. So the process and also the machines that enable this process. Yes, because Coates also has a big contribution to that. So in the first step, as it was mentioned before, the PPLUT, the pre prac layup table, is used. So we have different carbon fiber foils that are cut there, different layers, right? And in the upper part, you see the roll um, unit 
where the carbon fiber is rolled off. And the interesting point about this machine is that it is controlled via seven axes. And those different layers are basically applied to there. And Coates has, first of all, enabled the visualization. And we have the soft motion as the CNC um, in place. But for the next process, you know better than me. So after the machine or the system is baked and done before. The next step, which is a very important step, the ready half shell that was baked in the oven is put to the NDI, the non-destruction inspection. And there, the shell is checked with the ultrasound test method. We have two robots, an inside and an outside robot. And in, we also have, well, usually it's grippers, but instead of those, we have those um, the sensors. They actually go on the, uh, just check this half shell. And the robots, basically, they test with the specific distance from the shell. The goal of this test is to find defect areas and damages already at the, in this procedure step so that rework can be done. To make this process as precise as possible, because just imagine we have a length of 26 meters of those payload fairings, and we have to have the opportunity to use linear axes to position the robots respectively so that every area of this half shell could be reached. 20 supports, which are basically, well, supports and feet, hold this half shell. And the position needs to be just purely horizontal, because only then this measurement methodology can be used and is precise. So we have high accuracies of one hundredth in this all entire area of 26 meter. The outer robot is a three-joint, self-constructed, self-designed robot that calculates the positioning and the uh, trajectories. On the linear axles, we have external magnetic band givers that enable us the um, positioning of it. We also have decentralized ISOCAT in place so that all sensors and actuators can be read, measured, and controlled. And because of this high precision and the mechanical measurements, we cannot have high speeds or velocities. But it is necessary that we use real-time speeds, etc., so that the two meter heads are in place just as in real life. So this measurement can take, take up to three days. So the next step has a further processing of the payload fairing, and Mark will tell us more about that. Yeah, as it was said, the payload fairing is further processed, so it doesn't make sense before to have any reworks or whatsoever. What is further processed? Well, we have 26 meters of curved um, material, so the residues basically they are cut. We also have 17 PLF supports synchronous axes, and in a later step, up to 150 holes are drilled in this payload fairing, but also in profiles that are attached later on. In those profiles, we have different hoses. So those blasting hoses, basically, which make sure that at the end, you see the satellite or what have you, well, in outer space. We have an accuracy of one-tenth covering 26 meters, basically, which is quite high. We can only work in a specific temperature range 
because otherwise if you have some degree centered more you know the size of the material is affected and therefore it is difficult to process it i said it before 27 axes are 17 synchronous axes we have a curved external resolver where the holes are drilled precisely and everything happens with soft motion by codes Everything is realized with FSOE and safety. And during the process, we have up to three workers that operate, or workers that have different tasks. So that means they are implemented through the visualization. So what to monitor, what to attach, what to install, etc. And therefore, we have integrated CodeSys application. At this point, the payload fairing is prepared such that it can be equipped finally so for the final stage. And you know more about that. Yes, exactly. So in the last step where our machines contribute is the MSDA, the machining station drive assembly. So the assembly work is done. Therefore, the payload fairing, which has a half shell shape, is brought into rings, so closed rings. Here you can only see half of it because the other half didn't fit into the hall, in the assembly hall. And it, it is actually brought into this ring. And because of those ring, it is possible that they can be put into every position. So overhead, you can turn it 90 degrees, etc. And then a um, assembly platform is inserted into the rings and then we also have heating cushions different holdings etc that are attached and that's why this capability to turn the ring around by 300 degrees is necessary and therefore it's very important that we that there is no torsion applied to the entire component so both rings need to be 100% synchrone because of this tension, uh, because of this torsion, there could be tensions that demolish or destroy the payload fairing, causing an incredible amount of damage. So we also use codices for that. We have can open soft motion, and we synchronize those two axles by external markers or encoders, which are positioned in, a, in the ring shape as well. We have those encoder signals. We have a visualizations where the workers can basically preset the position in order to get the ring in a position that is needed for the next assembly step. So here we see as well a very exciting use case where we rely on the functionalities and characteristics of codes. So we are already at the end, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. I would also like to thank our customer, BioGravity, for the great products and also the opportunity to use this picture material. Thank you very much.